In this video tutorial, I will show you how to create a uh, dependency diagram using Dia. And we are going to use a uh, student record uh, example here. And we have all the attributes listed. And uh, these are the sample values for these attributes. First thing we need to do is to determine uh, which attribute or attributes uh, might be the primary keys. Uh, in this example, we have only one primary key, which is student ID and that uh, value is unique here and in some cases uh, names and other uh, values might might seem unique but it, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, that attribute uh, can qualify as a primary key so student ID in this case is a primary key and we'll move from there and let's go to DIA and what we need to do is we need to select uh, click this little arrow icon here uh, and select flowchart and in the flowchart menu, uh, we have a number of options, but we are going to use these little boxes uh, to create our uh, dependence diagram. So simply click the box and move your cursor over to the white area and click on your left key on, uh, on your mouse and it will drop the, the box here. As soon as it's done, you can uh, simply enter a name for this box. So we are going to use those attribute names, so student ID. Uh, simply we are going to repeat this, this process for the uh, rest of the attributes. Uh, for any reason, if you need to edit uh, the labels in these boxes, so you, you need to simply select the T for text uh, from the options here and click on the text that you like to edit. So well, you need to click a uh, couple of times. So once here, you can simply use your uh, keys on your uh, keyboard to get to where you want to, which uh, uh, value you need to change. And in this case, I like to capitalize the M, then this your here. And now we need to simply uh, line these uh, boxes up so that we can draw our dependency diagrams. I'm going. I'm running out of space, so I'll put them underneath here. And since we have already determined uh, which uh, attribute is the primary key, unfortunately we cannot uh, use underline option here uh, when you select the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color for this attribute. So simply select the box and when you double click on it you can get, get the properties options for that box. So there's a fill color option here. I'll change it to let's say to red to indicate this is the primary key. Since the, we have only one primary key, we know that primary key determines the rest of the attributes in this case. So we can simply we are going to make those connections. So how we are going to those connections is like this. And we are going to use this zigzag line here, but to be able to use that, we need to specify uh, its shape. So you have three options here. One is the fir uh, the the first one determines the left side of that uh, line, so it's going to be a straight line. Uh, you cannot see it, but if you go all the way up in these options, which is a straight line, and uh, it's going to be a line. It's going to be straight, so you could make it dotted, uh, dotted line and etc. here and the, on the very right you can it's going to be an arrow so you need to go select uh, the fourth from the top and here we go so once you select this exact line click and click anywhere on the white area so you can get to it so you're going to simply move your cursor over to the one side of the arrow and left hold the left key and move it over to the box that you like to connect to then it the box uh, highlighted so then it's connected and this arrow determines uh, first 
so an f name. So we are going to simply repeat the same this process for all the other attributes. And you can simply click this exact line, click here, and make the connection connected, and move the other side to the other attribute. Make sure they are connected because if you need to change the location of any of these boxes, so these connections stays with the boxes. These connections stay with the boxes. For example, now this is let's see, this is connected to here. If I want to move this box, so you see the connection also uh, moves along with the box. And all it continues, so we can connect these through here. Now we indicate the primary dependencies. Uh, since there is only one primary key, there are no partial dependencies. However, uh, we might have and we do have uh, some transitive dependencies. And let's determine those dependencies. And those dependencies are like uh, department code, department name, and department phone. In this case, department code determines the determ uh, department name and department phone. So there's a transitive dependency because department code is not part of the primary key. And same thing goes for the college ID which determines college name. So we are going to use the zigzag li uh, line here again. And when you double click on the zigzag line you can change the color. So let's use a different color in this case to indicate transitive dependencies. Select blue. And we're going to connect this one to department code and connect other side of the arrow to department name and get another one here you can change the color it's a transit dependency and let's do the same thing for the college ID which is here and Let's change this color to green since it's a different type of attribute. Now we have created our dependency diagram using uh, DIA. And the blue ones and the red uh, green ones are uh, transit dependencies. Now we need to save this file. Save as you're going to save this one as DIA. Uh, but if you like to copy this uh, figure and put on your uh, Word documents. You may want to export uh, this diagram as a JPEG file so you can simply go to File, uh, select Export and I have been using this one for a while but there's a different number of file types here. You can simply select the file type from the list and save it then later you can insert this image, uh, this diagram as an image to your uh, Word documents.